confused by the manual because it's not that clear but um, I know the clutch case has got to come off just because the split line runs down here that lot needs to go I'm just confused over exactly what it is I need to ignore and you know get rid of and whatnot and let's have a look at that as well so let's put them over there. Right, so one of the issues that we had was this chain tensioner jobby thing. And it took massive chunks out of this. There were a couple that were still left, which is down here, but there's absolutely no new ones. So I don't believe that that is clobbering into my basket anymore, which is kind of cool. Right, I've just had the clutch cover off. So I think I've got to get the clutch out to be able to get the... Well, I'm leaking goo everywhere, look. <laughs> Um, just to be able to get to the input shaft, let alone anything else. Um, basically, this whole casing on the bottom needs to come off. But the manual really isn't that clear. It really isn't. It's talking about... It's kind of assuming that you're just splitting all the cases. So in this, you know, everything. Well, I just want the bottom one off. <laughs> I want to get to that bit. Um... I have tried spinning it over, but obviously with the, you know, and going through the gears and stuff, but obviously with the clutch and stuff in place, it's all, you try to turn everything over and it's not that easy. So the clutch has got to come out and probably the basket as well, which is going to be fun. Right, let's, um, to get that out <laughs> I'm gonna have to make something um, it does actually show you in the manual as well um, where is it? Clutch removal. Uh, where are you I'll get a picture of it and I'll show you so it does say in here that you need to if you need to remove the clutch basket you have to use this thing it's made by Kawasaki so there it is. It actually shows you in the book of words how to make one. So, need a tool, make a tool. That's what we're doing.
Okay, so he's off. Um, I did make this as snug as I could make it. I had to guess on the welding as well. <laughs> the battery in the mast is gone. Flat. So he should come off. Like that. Got anything on behind it? Set. Right, so if you look head on, the basket is all loose. He could slide off, but this cush driving chain is in the way. So I believe I'm right in saying that this, I'm sure it's a cush drive. I'm sure it is, but I think he's going to have to come off. Um, because of the chain, probably these two are going to have to come off together. Let me have a look in the book of words. Yes. Oh, that makes it easier. Um. Right, you might have to get moved in a minute, but. That does make it quite a lot easier actually. Right, so where are we? You're gonna say I still have home alternative slapping the cush drive assembly. Really? Simultaneously pull both the cush drive assembly and the crank size sprocket off the receptive shelves, remove them along with the cush drive chain. Doesn't look like this is going to be a timed thing, it's literally just joining one shaft to the other through a chain. So, orientation from the back on, don't really give a monkeys. <laughs> but I will check the manual just to be sure. <laughs> Oh, you cock. You ain't. Oh, yeah, you've got to split the case. Oh, I don't know. Are you going to come off? There's a gear behind it. Well, that's what I mean. This is going to be the input shaft. So, basically, as long as 
means it can go out the other way, I'm happy. Um, we'll go like that. Yeah, it should be alright. So why you got to take all that? Uh, so that's the starter. Is it? Oh, right, I've got it, yeah. Matching gear. Right, so there's neutral. So, how does the linkage on this one work? So, if I was to go down, it pushes it, it turns it that way. So, pulling it this way. So there's neutral. So I'm, I'm just turning the, the input shaft by hand, but I've, this is the output shaft. So I'm just hanging on to that and it's not going anywhere. So that's fine. So going that way should be first gear. Come on. Is it? Yeah, it's first gear. Is neutral and then come on second third fourth Fifth, oh, hello. Oh, hello. That seemed to. Oh, fourth. Is that fifth or sixth? That was fifth. So that is sixth. There was definitely something funny going on there, wasn't there? Not really in anything there. Oh, so what's that then? See, it's all supposed to move up and down. Tiny little bit of free play in the floor. I mean, bugger all really. And I'm spinning it and I'm not seeing any broken teeth, which is what I thought it was going to be. Um, I'm not seeing any. It could be dogs, although from what I'm seeing, when there's a little bit of wear, a little bit, Could be dogs or it could be a bent selector for. Right, um, let's take the drum out. The fork's out then. I was hoping it was going to be bloody obvious. I was hoping it was just going to be like a broken tooth and go, oh, that's the thing. 
put it in. Spins one way, not the other. I do like looking inside the engine because it's all bathed in oil and everything looks lovely and clean. It's just obviously something's worn. Right, selector drum. Did that bit. Uh, no, we're not separating the crank. No, right, okay. Remove the bolts which secure the selector drum retaining plate on the side of the casing or remove the plate. So that's going to be these ones. Is it? Yes. Um, oh, where have I done that? Um, um, um. You're not even there, where are you? So you don't want to have it in neutral first. Um, No washes on them, which is kind of odd. Um, what does it say? Oh, where are we? Uh, withdraw the selector fork shaft from the lower crankcase and lift out the selector forks. So that's the shaft there. Oh, hang on. What did it say? Make a note of how the three selector forks are positioned to use as a guide when reassembling the gear selector components. Right, more pictures. Oh, I took my gloves off. <laughs> right, back in a minute. Right, looking at it and thinking it through, I probably didn't need to make that stupid tool. Because you have to think, well, I don't know, do you? Because um, with the clutch pack out, where's the basket? I mean, the basket sits on splines, right? Which is on the, in on the inner shaft, which is the bit that I'm rotating when I'm doing all this. Um, but with the clutch pack out and the pressure plate and the springs and all that other stuff out, then this moves independently. So you can just turn the gearbox over and everything else. Um, so I'm not, I probably didn't need to make that thing after all anyway. <laughs> Some people would have made a whole video making that stupid tool and it only took like, what, 20, 30 minutes if that. Anyway, um, where was I? Right, input shaft. Uh, input shaft? <laughs> so electro drum. I've had that little plate off. Um, but, um, I'll keep losing my plate, right. And slide the camera, remove the plate. Withdraw the selector fork shaft from the lower crank cases and lift out. Right, I'll probably do that. Because it says note the position of the forks. So, 
that'll do. Um, that ain't really helping, but we do it anyway. Um, and then the shaft, uh, let's bring you in for this. Right, I'm hoping that's good enough. Basically, you get to see what I get to see because I'm going to need to see it again when I do the reverse. Because in the book of words, it just says assembly is the reverse of disassembly. All right, so pull that shaft out. Come on. All right, so there's. Oh, he's not going anywhere. Oh, he's dropped. Do you come out now? Right, so that's the middle one, and he goes that way. That's the last one. Are you going to come out anywhere? Probably not. Maybe you come out when the gun comes out. Oh. Right, so he's going that way. And then the drum, I'm hoping. Right, so that's the drum. It doesn't look to be any real wear to it. I don't know. Compare it with the other one when it gets here. Right, so the... Um, actually, I'm just going to take a picture of that. So that selector drum was in there, like that. Um, so he's coming out. Um, these should just lift out. So there's that one. And there's that one. And all I'm doing is popping them back onto the shaft in the order that they came out in the same orientation. Because if you look at them, they are sort of different. Um, it's a bit of wear on the middle one. Shiny bit. Anyways, I'm not entirely sure which, so let's see there, you can see the rub mark there. I don't know, it could, I mean that's the first real sign of wear and tear that I've seen. Um, Alright, where's my bag? Right, so I, th I think what I'm looking at here is worn dogs. Um, I'll get some pictures. I need to know which of these gears does what. Um, I think there's another one. Uh, where are you? Get in focus. I know, I'll properly worn over. Um, I've spun the gearbox completely and I've checked every gear as I've been doing it and there aren't any missing teeth at all. There's nothing there at all. And even if you look at the gear in, you know, the, the gears in here, they don't, to me, they don't appear to be that worn. Um, not by a long shot. The dogs, on the other hand, they're buggered. I need to know which one does what. That's what I need. Right, okay, Sam's just turned up because I'm now no longer mobile. I don't have a bike or a van. <laughs> so she's my taxi today. Um, but that's it, I'm pretty sure it's worn dogs on this that's causing the problem. There will be um, a few photos and stuff that's come up during, you know, doing all this stuff. Um, that's the only thing that I can see. All the rest of it looks absolutely fine. So, uh, Monday I'm supposed to be getting um, the new gearbox coming with all the bits and stuff that I need. Um, I still need to split these cases and get this off if I'm to stand any chance of getting those out. <laughs> but basically I'm out of time today. So that's going to be the next bit. It's kind of like a part two. It might be a part three depending on how long it takes. But that's it. That's what I'm leaving it today. Thank you ever so much for watching. Do have to stay safe. We'll see you on the next one. Layers!